Now, you can probably toss and catch a lot better than your cat or dog or, or marmot, but the comparison isn't even fair because, you know, you have hands and, and fingers and opposing thumbs. So today, we're going to prove to the animal kingdom once and for all that us humans, we are the masters of throwing and catching. We're going to do something super simple, but remember, simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. Today, we are making hand sacks. Hand sacks are flat, sand-filled balls that are thrown and caught on the backs of your hands. Now, that might sound almost impossible at first. And if you're using something round and smooth like a crystal ball, it almost is. But it's a whole lot easier and funner if you use something less round and less slippery, like a flop ball. Now, Japanese children have been playing toss and catch games using the backs of their hands for centuries. The game Otidama is similar to the traditional American game of jacks, but instead of picking up jacks, a player might pick up bean bags or clap. And oftentimes, they would use the backs of their hands. Now, the modern day of hand sack became popular in the United States back in the 1990s, and millions of kids and adults have been honing skills using the backs of their hands ever since. And today, we are going to make three versions of the hand sack. A quick and easy paper bag hand sack, a sock sack using an old sock, and our own homemade version of the USO of North Carolina flop ball that we use at Family Reset Live events all across the state. We'll start with the simplest version, the paper bag hand sack. For this, all you'll need is a paper bag and some sand, or kitty litter, or unpopped corn, or rice, or something of that consistency, and a little bit of tape. Let's take it to the workshop and see how it's done. To make a paper bag in this bag, what we're going to do is we are going to take some sand and we're going to put it into the bag and slide it down to the bottom part, and then we're going to fold it up and have a nice so the first thing I like to do is take a little bit of, I'm using kitty litter here today because I couldn't go outside and get sand and my kitty couldn't either. Um, I'm just going to pour a little bit into the bag. Now notice how I'm not unfolding the bag but rather keeping it flat. This way I can get a good sense of how big it's going to be. Now right now it looks like there's about that much in there. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So and laying on the, on the table and pour just a little bit more in there. Get it to the bottom and all right. Now we've got get a good amount right there. So I'm going to get it so it's on one side. I'm going to fold it about a third of the way. tape there, using masking tape for this, all right, there, now I have a little sack, about the same size as the hand sack, and there we go, this is our paper bag hand sack. Now the advantage to using a paper bag is it's a little less slippery, so take the paper bag hand sack, put it on the back of your hand. First, just sort of balance it there and move it there, or move your hand around, and then, um, then you can try to start to throw it up a little bit. Now, if you have small hands, you can spread your fingers out nice and wide, and that'll make a, a bigger base for it to, to balance, or you can put two hands together. So practice throwing and catching your paper bag hand sack on the back of your hand.
Rats. The sock sack. Now, if you're like me, you lose socks. And I don't know where they could possibly go. I, I mean, I always keep my feet together, but alas, socks get lost. I have an odd one here, a less odd one there, an even one over here. I don't know, maybe the dryer eats them. But what do you do with so many single socks? Well, if you have any leftover from making your sock poi that we did last week, you might go ahead and make a one sock flop. For this, all you need is a one sock. You'll need a plastic bag, a pair of scissors, and you'll need something to seal it. So either some needle and thread, a glue gun, or some tape. And then of course you need sand to fill it. Now I will say if you're using a needle and thread or a hot glue gun, make sure you get some help from an adult. Let's go to the table and see how to make one of these. So here I have a sock and what I'm going to do is I am going to use the bottom of the sock for my sack. So let me see here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just maybe make it, um, I guess about that big. So I'm gonna cut right here. Now you wanna leave a little extra sock. You don't wanna cut it right to where you're gonna close it up. You wanna leave a little extra. So I'll cut my sock right there. And in fact, if you cut it a little bit big, you can trim it afterwards. So there we go. Cut my sock. Look at that. That's almost the same size already. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a little bit of sand or kitty litter into the tip of this sock. Now, sometimes you get socks that are a little bit, they're, well, they're woven um, loosely. And if you just put sand directly into there, they will, uh, the sand will leak out. And so what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna put the sand in a plastic bag, tape that up, and then put the plastic bag inside the sock. Again, like we did with the paper bag, I'm just gonna pour a little bit of kitty litter in there and um, get it to one corner so I can see about how big this will be. And that, that's, that's a pretty good size right there. All right, so now I'm gonna fold this. I'm gonna put a little piece of tape here. And then, now I have uh, not a regular sandwich bag, but one that has this Ziploc up top. So I'm just gonna cut that off so I don't have that plastic on the inside of my hand sack. Now it's gonna be really important to make sure I tape this up good so all that sand doesn't leak out. I got that folded. Get another piece of tape, fold that over, and there we go. All right, so I've got a little hand sack made out of a plastic bag, but uh, that's not that pretty, and it's well, that actually works pretty good. But we're gonna make it even prettier by putting it inside a sock. I'm gonna take the sock, put it in there just like that, And now I am going to seal this shut. Now, again, you could use um, some tape and just tape that shut. Or a hot glue gun you could do. Or uh, what we're gonna do here is we are going to sew it using a needle and thread. Now, before you sew, make sure you do get the help of a parent And if this is the first time you're sewing something, congratulations. Now there's lots of different stitches that you can do when you're sewing. I don't know what they are because I don't do a lot of sewing. But I'm just gonna go in and out, back and forth, careful with my fingers. And then when you get to the end, you just go around a couple of times, 
creating a knot with the thread. So I go through. Before I pull it all the way through, I go in that loop. And that just creates a little knot. And then I can cut off the thread at the end. On the other end, and there you go, a sock flop. Quick and easy, and it makes use of all your extra socks in a drawer. Now for this DIY flop ball, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need some heavy weight or medium weight fabric, something that's a bit stiff and has a tight weave. Uh, so that the sand doesn't leak out. You'll also need a marker and some scissors. You'll need something to uh, thread, uh, so a needle and thread. You'll need a ruler and uh, some filling, so some sand or kitty litter. And you'll need something round to help you uh, make the circle that you're going to cut out. I'm going to use a roll of tape. So for this, we're going to need to draw out two circles on a fabric. Now, we're gonna sew this inside out and then put it together. So, I like to draw the circles on what's gonna be the inside of the fabric. Now, we wanna draw circles that are about three and a half inches in diameter. Now, if you look at this tape roll right here, it's just under three and a half inches. And that's just because I wanna end up with a hand sack that's around three inches wide. Now you can go a little bit wider, a little bit less wide, both are fine. You can make these in any shape you want, in fact. If you want, you can do a, a big circle or a triangle. Or, that's not a triangle, that's a rectangle or a square or, or a triangle. Do whatever shapes you want. But for this, I am going to make it round. So I'm going to cut out two round circles out of this fabric. Now I'm going to do it over on the, on the edge there so I don't have to do a lot of cutting to get to it. So I'll we'll do one circle, just around like that. All right, and I'm gonna do another circle right next to it. Now this fabric here that I'm using, it's just a, it was a piece of sample fabric that somebody gave me. And I said, wow, that's pretty. I'm gonna make a hand sack out of it. Now I've got my two circles here as you can see. And what I'm going to do is I am going to cut those out with my scissors. To make it easier, I'm going to just cut the whole fabric so that I'm only working with a little piece. Cut along the circle. Doesn't have to be exact, but the more carefully you do it, the less extra material you'll have when you finish. One. All right, there we go. We have two pieces of fabric. Now, I'm going to take these pieces of fabric and I'm going to place them on top of each other. And I'm going to sew around the edges of the fabric. But I'm going to go three quarters of the way. I'm not going to go all the way because I have to be able to fill it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this little trick that somebody taught me where I'm gonna fold, or I'm gonna sew it so that the inside is going to be the outside eventually. And this way I can hide the stitch. So I want this to be my outside. I'm gonna match those up. And I'm gonna sew it around the edges and leave that much open. Here we go. Now I've got a needle and thread right here. And I'm going to tie a knot in the very end to keep the thread from pulling through. Cut off the extra. Needle and thread, time to get sewing. All right, well, it looks like I am getting close to the end here. And you can see that I've done a stitch almost all the way around, but I have an opening here. So I am just going to wrap this up by bringing this thread around, 
going through, and then I'm going to put the needle through that loop that I made and cinch it up. And I'm going to do that a couple times. That just puts a little uh, hitch, half hitch knot in there. And now I can cut the string. And I've got a hand sack. Now it's not completely sealed and it's inside out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to push it through that hole so that all the sewing that we did is now hidden on the inside of our flop ball. Get it pushed out like that. And there we go. Look at that. We've got what looks like a flop ball, except it's not filled. So last step is to put some uh, sand or some kitty litter in there and then sew it up. So now how much to put? I like to put enough so that it'll lie flat I don't want it to be round because we want the flop ball or the hand sack to be flat. So you might want to experiment. That's pretty good there, but I'm going to put a little bit more in. A little bit more in. And, and then I'm going to go and sew. And then like I did on for the inside, I'm going to go through, go around a couple times, pass the thread through the loop that I make. So I put a little knot in the thread. And then cut off the extra, cut off the extra. And there you go. Now, you'll soon see that with a little practice, flipping a hand sack on the back of your hand is not that hard. But with all these skill toys, the more time you spend working on tricks, the more times you pick up when you mess up, the better you get. Now, nobody ever gets good at anything because of magic. They get good because they worked hard at it over and over again, knowing someday they would get it right. In fact, anything that you want to learn how to do is worth trying again and again. So spend some time and make your own hand sacks and, and give them some play. Now, if you want, try to challenge yourself to see how many claps you can get with a throw. And if you want to share your record number of claps or, or take a picture of your hand sack or record a video, please do. Leave a comment with us at USONC or at Flow Circus Inc. And remember, if you do, tag us, USONC Reset and Flow Circus in your posts. For more events and activities with the USO of North Carolina, see our website, uso-nc.org. And for more information about Flow Circus, please visit flowcircus.com.